I'm Ashton Addison from Event Chain for Investment Pitch Media and the Crypto Coin Show. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Greg Osuri, the founder and CEO of Akash Network. Greg, welcome to the show and thanks for taking the time to be here. Thank you, Ashton. Super excited to be here. Yeah, I'm really excited to dive into Akash Network. I know you have a lot of things going on in the industry right now. So if we could just kick it off by starting with like a high level overview of what is Akash Network, that would be great. So Akash is essentially uh, the world's first open source cloud that's self-sovereign, uh, non-custodian, permissionless, right? And it, it works by connecting a, a layer of interconnected data centers, compute providers, usually uh, if you think about the landscape, 85% or so uh, of computing capacity in data centers remains unused. So Akash tries to aggregate this computing power and provides a open source platform to its users where the developers get to uh, enjoy the cost savings anywhere from two to three X of what they would otherwise pay on the cloud today, along with an incredibly modern developer experience, an experience that's really designed for, for needs of a uh, developer in 2021. Mm -hmm. Definitely, that's great. And are there a lot of problems that need to be solved right now in just the centralized cloud computing industry? Yeah, so a big, and really, if you think about the big fours, you know, Amazon, Google, mm -hmm. Microsoft, Alibaba, uh, they're created for the previous generation of software. And they, you know, these things have been around for 15 years. And as they got bigger and bigger, they forgot what the, the real focus should be is the developer, right? Mm -hmm. And also, uh, the uh, they've gotten so big, it, it and they built competitive uh, modes around them. It's extremely hard for new players to come and actually provide services. In a way, they created an oligopoly, and we all know what an oligopoly looks like. If you look at the airline industry or if you look at the um, telecom industry, it's not like people don't fly or people don't talk on the phone. Mm -hmm. These industries just stopped innovating, right, mm -hmm. because of oligopolization. So oligopolies tend to uh, create products that are misaligned sometimes to the customer base and they tend to um, create competitive modes that makes it prohibitive for new players to come and, and partake in, in, in what should be a competitive marketplace, right? So that's essentially what we're looking at uh, for the cloud. And cloud, if you think about it, it is the fabric that runs our society. I mean, cloud is where all of our data, if you like it or not, is stored and processed. Uh, and it's increasingly becoming larger and larger considering the amount of data that we process is doubling every year. So. So, and uh, there seem to be no other really a, a solution to this problem. Um, so that, that, that core, you know, problem of uh, the cloud getting disconnected and misaligned with the, with the people and the, uh, and the interests of the people it serves is what we're trying to fix with Akash by creating an open source cloud because open source, as we know, is, is, a, uh, is a key for the innovation that we have in software. And, and uh, we're trying to extend that innovation uh, so that we can have a more uh, a liberal and a more uh, uh, aligned uh, compute platform. Definitely. And in terms of the targets that you're focusing on, I know there's a lot of blockchain and DeFi based applications that are being hosted you know, on centralized cloud computing services and they're looking for decentralized solutions. Are you focusing on those industries specifically right now or are, are you really just able to host you know, all kinds of applications around the whole world? Yeah, so it's a generic platform. You can essentially run anything uh, that you run on Amazon or Google on Akash and we, you know, but since the applications are broad, we like to stay more focused so that our teams can focus on the efforts and be more connected to the users we serve, right? So, and the reason we chose to go with uh, with a DeFi focus and a more mm -hmm. blockchain focus is because this is a crowd that has ideological alignment with what we are, uh, what we offer as a product, as well as this is a crowd that's crypto native. So trying totally. to train a non-crypto native cloud, cloud on how to use these tokens and how to secure, mm -hmm. it takes a lot of, lot of effort. And on, on top of that, uh, uh, DeFi or decentralized applications, when we started focusing on this, this field I mean, a few years ago, it was nascent and had some inherent problems, number one being, you know, censorship resistance, right? Like a lot of 
lot of what we do is not very welcome in the broader um, ecosystem if you look at centralized cloud providers, right? So, um, uh, so the the reason we wanted to pick and choose our own people to help first was was an obvious choice, yeah. and uh, and fortunately the the space has been growing rapidly, and uh, and also. Um, and uh, you know, by staying closer to our users, we can also offer our Akash token itself, as, you know, and, and actually use some of these products that our customers, uh, you know, you, you know, offer. So it's it's a, it's a significant alignment with DeFi. That said, our bigger, broader market is really the bigger cloud, and and mm -hmm. the next best, or the most attractive uh, uh, area for us to focus is machine learning and and mm. computation heavy cloud because that segment is currently suffering with immense cost problem. If mm. you look at um, Anderson Horowitz wrote a report recently on how, uh, on, and that stated essentially 20% of margins tend to go to the cloud, right? So, mm. you know, yeah. it's it's extremely hard being an AI company, uh, the growth stage AI company that's trying to survive in this increasingly prohibitive uh, layer called cloud. So. Uh, that's attractive for us because Akash, one of the biggest benefits is cost savings, right? So the model that we envision for an AI company to function is more of a peer-to-peer -peer cloud. So to give you an example, um, since it's so expan expensive for you know to, to operate in the cloud, a lot of these companies tend to bring in their, their workloads in 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 house, right? So they have a server farm in the offices mm. that has GPU clusters, and they tend to tend to um, you know use these clusters. But the problem is they only use these clusters maybe two or three hours a, a day while they're training these models. And most yeah. of the time they're not using them. And But when they want to use them, they tend to peak their, their usage and they mm -hmm. tend to need more than they, they have. And that's when they still you know, end up using the cloud, right? So it's not completely optimizing your cost by bringing in. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's very inefficient because of usage pattern. In a scenario like that, they can install Akash and offer this unused capacity and earn credits in exchange, mm -hmm. um, which which is essentially a cash token, and they can use these credits to for when they want to use a peak capacity. So that's that's mm -hmm. really when you we see providers becoming users and users becoming providers, and that's very attractive for us. And we had incredible demand uh, from machine learning, and that's uh, that uh, we like to see that uh, uh, be our next use case. Yeah, that's great, Greg, and that's a huge inefficiency, and that's the case with a lot of things right now, where you know you're only utilizing the full capacity for a small amount of time, and otherwise you would just have these assets that are sitting there, and to be able to capitalize on that and share resources as well is a huge advantage. So that's great to hear yeah. that uh, your customers like that. Eight point two million data centers, eighty five percent not used. So you can imagine the kind of kind of capacity out there. Yeah, that's crazy. And I was researching into a cache, and I saw that you recently released the Mainnet Two. Now it sounds like a big milestone. Could you just give an update on you know what is uh, the new uh, upgrades to the Mainnet Two? Mainnet Two essentially completes uh, what we promised in a white paper. So this mm -hmm. is the world's first marketplace that we proposed our white paper in 2017 that we, that we released. And we laid out the design uh, for how a reverse auction marketplace for a cloud computing network would look like. And this is our realization of, our, of that vision. We had over two years of testing. As you know, this is a complicated product. And uh, uh, two years of testing, multiple test nets, and uh, you know, days and months of work that went into uh, essentially launching our uh, the promise of a decentralized cloud. In the current uh, offering, uh, it's a baseline offering in the sense that you can actually um, ask for a workload and providers will bid on the workload. Mm -hmm. And you know you, the uh, tenant, the, the, the lowest bid that matches all the requirements uh, uh, tends to win and you can deploy. And it's, it's a phenomenal um, system that does basic operations on, on deployment. And uh, the and also adds different little features that we didn't quite uh, talk about in our white paper on like improving tr trustability, as you know, mm -hmm. uh, a decentralized networks, especially something that's not a verifiable platform like less uh, like a uh, smart contracts platform, mm -hmm. Akash is not. Uh, so we have 
the question of like whether can we get the resources that we are promised. So, so we added this, mm -hmm. this feature called audited attributes where, where providers that are advertising what they have uh, is audited by, by, by a third party, a trusted third party and whatnot. So that improves the trust in a decentralized network. So we added this amazing, uh, and we, you know, we built um, usability tools on top of that. So it's, it's not as obvious uh, you, that you're actually interacting with a uh, with the blockchain, but rather feels like a more uh, uh, open source tool mm -hmm. than a trading transactions and trading transactions, this sort of thing. That's great. And yeah, I, I, I know um, you sort of mentioned that it's this new uh, UI is sort of like a Uniswap experience. Now, I, I thought that was a really interesting comparison. Can you just sort of elaborate on what you meant by that? So one of the least understood and least appreciated things in, in decentralized networks, I think is user experience, right? I love Uniswap, even though, it, you know, I pay a premium both in gas fees or even like um, exchange fees, mm -hmm. I tend to use Uniswap first mm -hmm. before I go to centralized exchanges. Why? I think about the sheer experience of swapping two tokens, right? So if you want, if you have to go on a centralized exchange, you go log in, solve the capture, you know, hope you get the traffic lights right, the number of traffic lights, <laughs> and then you go and log in, and then you you know you you swap, you pay the fee, and then when you, well first to deposit, there's whole like gamut of things you go through to deposit things, and then you swap and then withdraw with two verifications, your email, and then your your you know two FA, and then you log out. The entire process is so cumbersome versus going to Uniswap and click click click, you're done. I mean, you mm -hmm. pay extra gas fee, but yeah. Sure, you know, I'm willing to pay the premium because mm -hmm. of the comfort. I think people tend to um, uh, uh, not understand the value of comfort and that what Uniswap showed us is like, yeah, you don't need to be fast or, you know, uh, cheap. You can actually provide an incredible user experience mm -hmm. based on a decentralized network and that's a lot preferred than, than normal. And on top of that, you know, the, the beauty of non-custodian less and the beauty of like I owning my assets and the beauty of yeah. um, there's a security that, that I get from owning my own keys. Uh, all that adds up to the experience of Uniswap. So imagine extending similar experience to the cloud. I mean, mm -hmm. Akash today, you don't, you just, there's no email addresses and there are no passwords. There's no need for you to give your personal information that we all know the, the kinds of things that happen these days um, and the compromises we have to make to just to deploy something on the cloud. No credit cards, none of that stuff. So it's beautiful. Right now, the experience is command line, but yes, we, we will extend that experience over to the web. But when it, when we do that, it you will notice a Uniswap style deployment experience and that's coming very soon. So that makes the network a lot more programmable, a lot more composable. And what we're really excited with IBC coming, com, coming live is extending the composability to the rest of the ecosystem through interoperability is extremely powerful. So uh, my I had this vision of like ownerless web services, like where people can actually own web services, not, not a single entity or not a single human being, but the world can actually own a web service that uh, is, is managed by a DAO and you know mm -hmm. has a threshold signature for deploying and controlling all that stuff. So all that can be realized now with a decentralized cloud I'm really excited about. Yeah, that is very exciting. And I'm uh, really interested to see how that plays out as you continue to grow the network. And earlier you mentioned about you know capitalizing on those underutilized resources and rewarding those participants with the Akash network token. And I just wanted to touch back on the token because I know uh, there is a lot of intricacies within the platform that are using the Akash token. So if you could just elaborate a little bit on you know what are the main functionalities with the Akash token and does it create a sustainable ecosystem within the Akash network? Sure. So the Akash AKT is a native token of Akash network. And the first uh, primary use for the AKT token is to secure the network. As you know, Akash is a sovereign independent network. It, it is an L1 in its own right. right? It is a set secured by a validator set that essentially uh, come to consensus in a proof of stake uh, algorithm. And uh, the each token has one vote. And that's how you secure the network. So it's a staking token. Mm -hmm. Number two, it is a value of exchange. Now, Akash, you have different properties called stream payments and you know escrow, uh, escrow type payments. And Akash token provides those 
a beautiful features at a cost model that's sovereign. So we don't we don't really have to worry about the Ethereum cell gas fees or, any, or stuff like that. And a third thing is it is used to create subsidies. Right. So right now we bootstrapped the Akash network, the security of the Akash network using the inflation. So without inflation, there is no incentive for folks to stake the token without which we will not have a network. So the mm -hmm. subsidies can be created by having control over the monetary policy. And what, what we're, where we are going is I wrote a paper called uh, Bootstrapping a Free Market by Borrowing from the Future. Essentially, mm -hmm. um, the idea that, yes, you have this inflation, and you can use this inflation uh, to subsidize some of the costs and that it will in, in turn can actually accelerate growth. And this is not a new idea. This is an idea that Larry Keynes proposed on how we you subsidize corn industry in the United States or how we subsidize textile industry in, in, in India. So when you tend to, when you have an industry and you want to accelerate or you know, growth in, in that industry using inflation, that means creating new money supply and using that that to actually subsidize or like taxation, but usually it's, you know, it's the inflation, right? The, mm -hmm. that, that, that we create uh, is actually a good way to do so, right? So we kind of borrowed some of those ideas and implemented or, or proposed to, to, to be implemented uh, very soon. Uh, so using that, we can actually reduce the cost even further to 10X. So wow. it's of course an economic hack, right? So and the and the difference is actually coming coming from the inflation and you know mm -hmm. it gets added to the thing. But yes, that's not like sustainable on a long term. But for whatever, um, in, in the sense, the I mean, there's a finite amount of tokens you can't just keep printing tokens, mm -hmm. right? And again, the inflation is on a decay curve, so the inflation goes down every block period. Mm -hmm. um, Right now, it, uh, we, we began at 100 million tokens, and there will be 389 million ever created in 80 years or so, right? Mm -hmm. So, so it's not it's not uh, infinite. I mean, it's still finite. But as long as the ex the, the subsidies are accelerating growth, we mm -hmm. which in turn uh, increases the utility of the token, which in turn attracts liquidity, right? So it goes in a cycle mm -hmm. of like this growth feeding into the adoption that feeding into the liquidity. So and that's, that's the beauty of this, the cyclical economics of Akash. Great. Thanks for that, Greg. And we're running short on time, but one of my last questions is, in terms of the long-term success of Akash Network, what do you think will be one of the major key factors to achieving that long-term success? The key factors will be product market fit, the self, uh, you know, self-served user, right? Mm -hmm. A user that can actually use the network without talking to anybody, without uh, asking anybody, and sustain that. I think that is going to be the pinnacle of uh, Akash. And now we saw a certain amount of product market fit in our test nets. I'm not going to claim that we have product market fit. We could be just launched yesterday, and um, and that is going to be our number one priority. Mm -hmm. And again, with product market fit, you have to make adjustments and you have to make iterations on the way and we're really Definitely. looking forward to we're entering this we're launching this network with the mindset that yes we're going to have a lot of things that we're going to learn and we're really excited about these learnings and actually working with the people to to get to the product market fit. Definitely it is very exciting and for the viewers that are looking to follow along with the updates to Akash Network and get involved what's the best way for them to learn more? The best way, of course, go to our website, Akash Network, and you'll find a lot of resources. Our blog is very, very active and we consistently publish. But Twitter uh, is where we live. Uh, so Akash dot, uh, is Akash's Twitter account is at AkashNet underscore. Mm -hmm. And my Twitter account is Greg Osuri. And we both are very, very active uh, on Twitter. So and and you know, I respond to people really quickly on Twitter. Uh, and my DMs are open as well. And of course, there, there are Telegram channels and, and Discord channels as well that, that are pretty heavy uh, in terms of engagement. Great. Thank you, Greg. I will leave those links in the description box below for the viewers. All the best with Akash Network moving forward. And let's follow up in the near future. Thank you, Ashton. This was uh, really, really fun.